let's go back to the time before I got success. Let's do that again! Before Bayern were the throne, before Holland, Lewandowski, and Mbappe made my life a living hell, Leverkusen was the start. But what if it went completely wrong? So wrong, in fact, that we barely won a game. And by the time we got to November, the board wanted to talk to me. I had a meeting for 3 p.m., but due to my anxiety, I decided not to show up. Yeah, I got sacked. In the morning. So we had to go job hunting, and with my reputation hit, I didn't really have the choice of the world. What are you saying? I initially saw two teams that could make a good story, RC Lens and RCD Espanol. Lens have actually won Liga before, but that hasn't been the case since 1998, and their biggest rivals Lille have won it twice since then. They were in the relegation zone. Espanol, on the other hand, are Barcelona's local rivals, and have suffered a shocking relegation in recent years. They were 19th two points from safety, and were requested by a few people. Lens gave an offer first, but Espanol seemed like it was meant to be. However, another job popped up. Hello amigo, how are you? Come to Besiktas. <laughs> After a good interview, fans were wanting me to come in. I felt the vibes of Besiktas. Yeah, they were 12, but Mishi Bachuai, Pjanic, the Canadians of Laren and Atiba Hutchinson, I thought it was meant to be, but they went with the safe route. So Espanol it was. Looking through their squad, they look better than a relegation side for sure. Although, there were definitely some flaws with them. The squad is kind of old. I mean, Diego Lopez is 40. I also don't know most of them. The ones I do were Alex Vidal, who was a Barcelona flop, and Barba for Vallecano, as I managed them once and got sacked. Yanhel Herrera is Venezuelan, Vilhenia was a wonder kid back in the day, and Ronaldo Thomas is more known for his three letters than his Real Madrid days. There is also Wu Lei, whose goal tally with Espanol definitely doesn't match his Chinese Super League days. Now what tactic are we going to use? The false nine with Leverkusen didn't work out, so I had a secret plan. It's normally used for emergencies, and I've only told one person about it, but it's a 4 triple f two. We went out with it against last place Elche, going all out attack. They scored in the 12th minute. You are shit. One player I was looking forward to using was Sergi Darder. His attributes look incredible. And for those that don't know much about FM, attributes are rated out of 20. So if we look at N'Golo Conte, while he does have good playmaking attributes with passing and vision, he clearly has attributes better to win the ball with 19 tackling, plus the work rate and teamwork to do things others in his team wouldn't. So something like a ball winner or central mid on defense slash support works for him. Darder was being used as a ball winner since he seemed like a great passer and tackler, but I was wrong about the tackling as he was sent off. Are you dumb? Mojica would score again in the second half, giving us a 2-0 L in our debut, which put us in 20th place. Espanol Fan TV was already saying crew out. I couldn't believe it. After all that, my assistant thought it would be a good idea to have a team meeting to lift the mood. With Osasuna next, a good result was needed, and their right back Nacho Vidal got sent off. Is this just a common occurrence in La Liga? I don't know. What it is for certain is making my life easier. Loren was dropped for this match after dropping a stinking 6.2 against Elche, which soon led to the winter of Wule. Can he find a man? In behind to Wule! Wule! <laughs> Let's go! Raul de Thomas would score a second to secure the win, although some will call him RDT. Others may say R.D.T. The first win for the club would take us out of the relegation spots, but with Katafe afterwards, who were in fifth, it wouldn't be easy. But football is a simple sport. 22 men walk onto the pitch, and Wu Lei scores. I couldn't believe it, but I also couldn't believe this strike by Maximovic. Then before halftime, Sandro, yeah, the Everton Sandro got in behind her defense and scored the go-ahead goal. That ended up being the winner. A 0-0 fall versus Alaves, putting us back in relegation. Another 0-0 occurred versus Cadiz, but this was in the Copa del Rey, and after 120 minutes of nothing, goals were finally scored in penalties. Except for Nico MD. However, I was starting to figure out what lineup would work best. With the 4-4-2 being the system, January became a miraculous month. A big reason why was our keeper Oyer Olazabal. I was previously playing 4-year-old Diego Lopez, but once I made the switch against Alves, he made that spot his own. Several great saves were made in a 1-0 victory over Celta de Vigo, where of course, Wu Lei scored. Real Sociedad then got a red card in the first 10 minutes, leading to RDT being gifted a goal and Pedrosa smashing one in. Yanuzai did score a free kick, but 5th place Sociedad were defeated. Another tough match was next, as the Yellow Submarines were hosting, well, us. Their manager was no longer Unai Emery, as he was sacked in November and is now chilling in Malaga. Niko Kovac took charge, and after an early scare as Pino's goal was disallowed, we grew into the game and the legend of Wu Lei continued. Barba in behind to Wu Lei. Wu Lei. <laughs> Herrera? Can you find Wu Lei? I do not believe this. <laughs> Wu Lei? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
January would then end with Real Madrid, where despite them having these chances, they wouldn't score, as the match ended nil-nil. Transfer-wise, in January, several players went out on loan. It also saw Katie Barre move to Bournemouth for 2.4 million. Reinforcements were needed. David Lopez plays as my center mid on defend, and he only has maybe a year or two left at the top level, so I decided to bring in Arno Martinez for 2.4 million. He may not be a center midfielder, but with the passing and tackling stats, I feel like I can mold him into a great one. I also wanted a center back that can become great. Josep Sutalo from Dinamo Zagreb ended up being the option, and while he only has played six times due to injury, I got some hopes for this guy. Finally, our wingers weren't great, and Barba and Alex Vidal were alright, but I wanted another option that had great pace to go along with work rate and ability. The depth options weren't great, so Ryan Frazier was brought in on loan from Newcastle. He would make his starting debut versus Granada, where in the first minute, he would assist RDT. Despite Arezzo scoring a banger, RDT would get his brace, assisted by Lule, which gave us another victory. A great run of form, and maybe that could continue against a struggling Sevilla side, who sacked Julian Lopetegui earlier in the campaign. Never mind. Don't fear though, despite Valencia being high up the table, Ryan Fraser would assist RDT once again and house our way through another win. Vaicano and Mallorca were then dealt with, followed by revenge over Cadiz with a Wu Lei brace. That then led to a tough run in the season. Bilbao, Barca, Atletico Madrid, and Real Betis. Bilbao was a tough match, and despite the shots that were piling up, we were surviving. A draw at San Mamez looked likely. Until Via Libre ruined my night, on to Barcelona, who are Catalonian rivals. Espanyol haven't defeated them in a match since early 2018, but if we're talking about La Liga, you have to go all the way back to February 21st, 2009. Our match though, started off brilliantly, as Ryan Fraser got behind Barca's back line and made it 1-0. 17 minutes later, Wu Lei would get behind and shockingly made it 2-0. Yanhel Herrera got both assists and it seemed like we were on our way to a monumental victory. Then, Ferran Torres scored right before halftime. He did it again after halftime too. 2-2 two -two isn't bad, we just need to Simeone our way through this like we usually- Oh come on! Dani Alves scored the pen and Ferran Torres scored his third later on to strike Spain without the S into our hearts. Ironic since we're in Catalonia. We also got destroyed by Atletico Madrid afterwards. It looked like more of the same was going to happen versus Batiste, as they were creating several chances. They're such a good team, especially with Nabil Fakir. So good in fact, they ended up winning the Europa League. In this match however, they wouldn't score against us. Instead, Alex Vidal scored and sacrificed his season for it as he got injured minutes later. With 6 matches left, we were in 11th, well above the relegation spots, and not far off Europe. Could we really go from 20th place to European spots in the span of 5 months? Elche got us believing as we smashed them 3-0, getting revenge for our first match. It seemed like Levante would go the same way as we went up 2-0 in the first half. That included a Puskas winning strike by their defender. Are you me? Then, Roger Misses came up. And no, he didn't miss a penalty, or this tap-in. Roger Misses, whose real name is Roger Marty, and it's in behind you Roger Misses again! And he scored a hat-trick? What is this? We were well behind Europe now, and with Katafe next, it seemed like another L was inevitable. But after months of barely scoring, Wu Lei would pop up once again to score the only goal of the match. The one nils continued against Osasuna, as Raul de Thomas, RDT, scored early, and we won again. The chase for Europe was still on, but we were tied 1-1 with Alaves, as Jason and the Argonauts cancelled out RDT's goal. But when it seemed like the match was all but over, what the heck? Where did that- where did Jason come from? He loses it though! Yavi Puedo! BANG! Yavi Puedo gets the winner in the 90th minute! We were in 9th place, 3 points behind Betis, who we had no chance of passing due to our head-to-head -head being equal, and goal difference being worse. But we could pass Celta de Vigo on head-to-head, -head, and we played them on the last day. I didn't expect us to be in this position already, but we weren't showing up. We had nothing to lose, so we went full kamikaze with a 4 triple 2 2 seconds later. Corner, a free kick for... Uh, Literally seconds after the change. As we were pushing, they scored a second, but we can't scoff at finishing 10th. I think I did a good job, and there are some good pieces here. The fullbacks of Pedrosa and Oscar Gill seemed solid, Olazabal was a savior in goal, Sergi Gomez was reliable, while RDT and Wu Lei were the most unlikeliest of duos. There are a lot of players that don't provide much, but some players that are coming out of our youth academy are looking like the real deal to go along with our signings. Will we ever overcome Barca, let alone win La Liga? Who knows? But I guess only time will tell.
So he's supposed to be good. Prefer really not to um, not to speak. In our second campaign with Espanol, there was a lot of optimism in the air. It seemed like we were learning our system. The board thought we were a mid-table team, and there was no European football to worry about in the dreaded Winter World Cup season. Thank you, Jesus! There were some great transfers made too. One day, I was just chilling on my computer, looking through some transfer news, when I saw Bordeaux bidded 1.8 million on. <clears throat> Let me get this right. Anel Amethodjic. What? I checked his contract information as that was available with ease, and Bordeaux had a 3.1 million option to buy him, but they are trying to penny pinch Malmo. I thought, let's see if they accept 2 million, and they surprisingly accepted, and Ahmed came to the club. I then loaned in Matteo Cancellieri from Roma, as Newcastle were wanting too much for Ryan Fraser. Trying to improve the depth of the side, Luis Mia came from relegated Granada for 3.2 million, and Alejandro Francis came from Real Zaragoza. My plan was to slowly start him over Oscar Gill as Francis develops, and maybe sell Gill next summer. Annoying thing about this summer though was not knowing our upcoming schedule until July 10th. They announced that and basically said, you're starting your season in 21 days, good luck. To start the campaign, it was Getafe up first, and despite us having a few good chances, the score remained nil-nil until the 90th minute. Oh, come on. Oh. Thankfully, we bounced back versus Rio Vallecano with a Raul de Thomas goal, RDT. Levante afterwards, more 90th minute pain. I'm so pissed now, you have no idea. Two losses at home to start the campaign, and it was only going to get worse with Atletico Madrid afterwards. Despite the stat sheet making it look like we were Spanish Burnley, we were keeping ourselves in it, until we conceded a damn penalty and again lost 1-0. We weren't conceding that much, but scoring was a huge issue. Wule was hitting blanks, and while RDT scored against Athletic Bilbao, they scored before that, and guess what? Don't do this to me. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? We lost in the 90th minute again! I needed a new striker to at least provide competition for these two bozos, so I spent 7.5 million up front and another 7.5 million in installments for Granada's Arezzo. How original. Sales were made in the summer to help fund that. Guys like Matias Vargas, Fernando Calero, and Paul Lozano went for good sums. Others left too, either on loans or on low fees. One player I was debating on selling was Alvaro Vadillo, who came back from loan and could be a good squad player. However, I decided to sell him in the end. And I rude that decision against Ibar. RDT still knew how to score, but Ibar would find a winner in the 56th minute, giving us yet another L. Now, I don't think we were playing too badly in most of these matches, so I kept it going against Real Batiste, where they proved me wrong. Another L. This time, 3-0. I needed to tweak the system, so I dropped one of the center mids into a defensive mid roll against Villarreal, which didn't make a difference. As a potential meeting with the board was looming, Cancellieri won a free kick, and for once, Someone else scored a goal, and what a strike it was from him. Add another one to the banger list, as our left back Pedrosa smashed one to give us a 2-2 draw. Did the formation make a difference? Probably not, but it was a positive result, and we didn't lose to Almeria. But scoring in the box was still a problem, and 9 games in, only won once. But we were about to face 3 teams that were as down bad as us, and I think we found our confidence. 7 goals in 3 games, with finishes from all over the pitch, including Wule. Shutalo and Ahmed were starting to form a bond as the Bosnian brutes. Our young keeper Yohan Garcia was performing well, and Mia, who was supposed to be a squad player, was finding an important role in starting 11. It was getting fun. We even got a manager sack who was talking crap to us before his sacking. Unfortunately, the matches before the World Cup break had me shaking in my boots. Valencia came first, and despite keeping it close, Maxi Gomez found some space in the 75th minute to give us an L. With the two Spanish giants next, more Ls were expected. Thankfully, in the Catalonian derby, Barcelona's players were very tired, and we stayed in the game despite not doing much. That would change soon, but not before Ansu Fadi finished off a nice passing play, which required me to go all out. Cancellieri, to Wule, to Dardare, in behind to Arezzo, can he do it? Let's go! We ended up with a higher expected goals than them, but could we also surprise Real Madrid? <laughs> it's worth noting that Mariano was starting because they decided to sell Benzema to Chelsea. An interesting move, Florentino. Let's see what Pedrosa can offer. Whip in to Wule, Wule, Wule again. No way. Please be on side. Let's go! Wule! <laughs> and somehow, we walked out of the Bernabeu with a 1 0 victory. 13th place going into the World Cup wasn't the best, but remembering the start of the season, I think we take it. 
several months later. It came home. Back to Spanish football, for some reason, the Copa del Rey was played during the winter friendlies. So while our whole team was not match sharp, Zaragoza, who were in La Liga 2, still had regular fixtures and defeated us 1-0. After the December friendlies, we are back to actual football. Third place Sociedad were up first, and once again, we got a shocking 1-0 victory. The Bosnian Brutes were doing their job, Juan Garcia was the new Casillas, what could go wrong? <laughs> Sevilla won and kinda still has a massive reputation at home. Not many teams can defeat them there, and our two visits at the Ramon Sanchez P1 in this adventure have been less than ideal. It was a bit of a yo-yo month though, as after getting slaughtered, we defeated Alves 1-0, thanks to RDT, then lost to Osasuna, thanks to this Darko goal, and finally, we destroyed Getafe with these four goals. Sadly, Cancellieri got injured for a month, which left me with these declining Spaniards on the wings, and another one who was just awful. I needed some reinforcements. While Mo Yan from the academy was nowhere near ready, his compatriot Wu Lei needed a reinvention. To say his effectiveness in front of the onion bag was horrid is an understatement. The same can be said about RDT. He was our top scorer at this point, with six goals, maybe I was playing him in the wrong role, but we needed alternative firepower. The answer to the question everybody wants to know. Cool. What's your decision? Hello? I decided to sign Adam Plozak for a surprisingly low fee to play him in the advanced forward role. With Wule becoming the winger Wule, I still wanted one more wide midfielder. Roo, roo, roo. Ba, 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 ba. Rooney Bargy. Were you expecting someone else? He arrived for a really low fee for the amount of potential he has, and although he mostly came off the bench, he will get game time next season. With two exits of Dimata and Rui Ball at the end, we are ready to go on a run. Like the month of January 2022, February 2023 was an undefeated month. Roger Miss's goal was cancelled out by a late corner from Ahmed to draw 1-1 with Levante, Adam Hlozak arrived versus Vallecano, securing the three points with a brace, and then we drew 0-0 with Bilbao. A little underwhelming. But that changed with Atletico Madrid. And in behind, Hlozek. Bang! Pedrosa whips it in. RDT doesn't win it. But we get it. Hlozek. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. All over Atletico Madrid right now. RDT to Sutalo. He finds Wu Lei. Wu Lei's shot doesn't go to the net, but it goes to Hlozek. And it's a goal. It's 3-0. <laughs> Hat-trick for Hlozek in 30 minutes. Incredible. Loza could have had six, but this man was on fire for me. He closed out an undefeated February with a strike against Batiste in another surprising victory. While I would rather not talk about the next three matches that were all L's, Lozak did score in two of them. After the March international break, Lozak wanted to have more fun as he had an absolutely nutty first half versus Celta de Vigo. It's been an incredible game. Oh, oh yeah! Let's go, Gozek! Hat-trick for him in this game. <laughs> Another hat-trick in 30 minutes for him, as Celta were defeated 4-3. As he was singing Queens Don't Stop Me Now, awkwardly between games, the opponents were listening as he scored against Elche, Leganes, and Valencia. Three matches, we all won. He ended the campaign with 15 goals in 16 matches. I just hope he can continue it into the next season. However, we have to thank Wu Lei for all of this. He sacrificed himself to play in a position he didn't even know, just for the team to succeed. It could bring a tear to any man, so hopefully Moyan takes inspiration inspiration from this and stops being an unambitious piece of sh After 32 match days, we were in 9th place. 14 points off 6, but don't let the colors fool you. 7th was the Europa Conference League playoff spot as Real Madrid won the Copa del Rey. The gap to 7th was doable with it only being 3 points. However, the teams surrounding us were pretty good. Another reason to be doubtful was the remaining schedule. Barca, Real Madrid, Sociedad, and Sevilla all in a row. The last two matches would be doable, but we had to get to that point first. Going into the Catalan Derby, this was crucial. Not just for the potential European place, but to make sure Barca's title charge wasn't so simple. After Eric Garcia nearly scored from a corner, I made some tweaks to our defensive corner positions. It didn't work. Then, the main man Hlozek got on a breakaway. But Ter Stegen was well positioned. The game was tight, but after an Ansu Fati dive fooling VAR official Fernandez Hernandez, the penalty was given. Trincao was stepping up to secure the result. Oh my gosh, Trincao missed the penalty! <laughs> Barcelona had a couple more chances that were nearly goals, but I had to go for it and bring out the 4 triple f 2 and a highlight popped up in the 90th minute. Rooney, Arezzo, gets by his man, in behind to Dardare. Boom! Let's go! <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this. Adama! <laughs> it wasn't a win, but it sure felt like one. But that's not going to help us reach 7th. 
neither was his Modric strike in the second minute. Oh, come on! Real Madrid's defenders were so annoying. So much, in fact, they ended up with six on the pitch, two on the wings. Eight points was the difference now. And despite Lozak scoring against Sociedad, we fell in defeat to them. Sevilla was a must win, and RDT got close. He wouldn't get close again though, as we won a penalty and made sure Wule took it. A victory was secured, but if Batiste defeated Barcelona, it would be too little, too late. And they win. That result confirmed the reality of us not getting into Europe and Barcelona winning La Liga. So who got 7th? It wasn't Sevilla, nor was it Real Batiste, but it was Levante! Damn you Roger misses! Like every new season, I cannot wait for the transfer budget. Did an economic collapse take down the entirety of China? Our owners should be loaded! With limited funds, the main objective was to get a wonder kid left back to eventually take over Pedrosa. And Barcelona? had one available for just 400k. He resigned with Barca. Get in proper mess. So I needed to sell someone to fund any sort of transfer. With Francis developing and Victor Gomez coming back from loan, I decided that I could afford to lose Oscar Gill for 12 and a half million. Unfortunately, our revenue retained for transfers was at 45%. So again, my options were limited. The big reveal was Rafael Obrador. We also brought in Victor Pastrana, aka Mr. Pastrami, on a free because he seemed like a good mentor for Moyon. After the failure of the Crew Cup, we had Vincent Company's Sevilla on opening day. The bookies didn't rate us, and neither did Hayes' Corona, who got sent off in the 22nd minute. There's one fucking side of me that you haven't fucking seen, boy. As the final hair fell off Company's head, we walked away with an easy 3 0 victory. Um. What? Atletico Madrid were down bad as they lost their opener to Valencia 5-0. So it wasn't surprising when Adam Jose continued his ridiculous goal scoring form from last season to find the breakthrough. He scored in every single one of our first 5 fixtures, scoring 7. We won all of those games. Except for Atletico Madrid, as slow and Suarez somehow got behind our back line and tucked it home. Frustrating. But Atletico Madrid would have a fun 2024. Ourselves? Well, it was looking good being in the Champions League places after 5 matches. Only problem, we weren't keeping clean sheets. But that soon changed against Granada. In a nil-nil draw. The good news was that we got revenge over Levante, who with Roger misses, were once the most frustrating team to play. So, it was time to take on our annoying Catalan neighbors. The first half was tight with it at nil-nil. So after an inspiring halftime speech, we conceded 3 minutes following the break. Still can't beat them. On to the third most annoying team in La Liga, Ronald Koeman's Athletic Bilbao. He was hired in Season 2, where we drew 0-0 and lost 2-1, so I expected more of the same when they scored in the 5th minute. However, we got a penalty in the 27th minute, which meant a goal was on the platter for RDT. He missed. Twice. Despite Danny Garcia getting sent off early in the second half, we couldn't put the ball into the back of the net, and Coleman handed me the L. Respect. Afterwards, the Batiste fixture was all evens, kicking us out of the European places. It wouldn't get easier with Real Madrid. It was Mariano's season, and it really should have been Luka Modric's retirement tour, where he's still going strong. In the match itself, Lozic must have not appreciated Marca rating Mariano over him. It's Wule on the ball, finds RDT to Pedrosa, Let's go, Godzak! For the second campaign running, Madrid were defeated. Champions League football was looking attainable, following a decent run of form heading into the new year. Wins came against Sporting Gijon, Getafe, Alaves, and Eibar, along with draws versus Celta de Vigo and Villarreal. The latter was frustrating, as the win was more than deserved, but Gerard Moreno nodded in Trigueros' strike, ending the match 2-2. The final fixture I didn't mention was versus Valencia, where we didn't do anything. Except, concede a penalty. They certainly deserved to win. In spite of that, we were in 5th place, and just 1 point off 3rd. Lozic won multiple player of the month, having 15 goals to date, and I don't really understand how he's scoring so much. Of course he looks good, but I've had strikers with better attributes perform a whole lot worse. Now, we were heading into January, where the club still had no money. Throughout the year, contracts were given to several key players, impacting our budget. For some reason, I thought bringing new gens in on free transfers was a good idea. Then, a news item popped into my inbox. It was Newcastle, offering a contract to one of my players. We have several older guys leaving at the end of the season, so it wasn't a big deal. Until I realized it was our Chinese new gen, Sit down! Nobody talk! who we've been trying to mentor to make sure his determination and personality improves. However, he was on a youth contract, so Newcastle would only have to pay 700000 in compensation to get him. I panicked and offered him the rest of our wage budget. It was way too much for him, but he ended up staying and played a decent role in the Copa del Rey. 
we haven't had success in this competition so far, but things were going to be different. Against Juan Labrada, Moyon would score, and our Cypriot Academy new gen scored a brace. 3-2 was the result, and the same continued versus Olot with a 5-1 victory. Both players previously mentioned contributed. Kadith in the third round would be tougher, but a penalty was won and Moyon didn't miss. Despite the host equalizing, RDT would score 10 minutes later to secure the dub. Now we needed to take this competition more seriously in the fourth round, as Osasuna came up. We did. The quarterfinals versus Alaves and the almighty Chris Wood? Well, they were no match for Flozek. He got all four of our goals in a 4-2 victory, and with the big two out of the competition, Valencia were drawn as our semi-final opponent. Amin Hojic and Shutalo were still continuing their partnership, and despite Shutalo getting hate mail from Croatians, he was performing well as one half of the Bosnian Brutes. Amin Hojic, on the other hand, did something I couldn't believe. Okay, we don't have the first highlight. That was absolutely... Oh, oh, I thought he got right... Oh, oh, so... <laughs> I was so worried. <laughs> what actually happened in the highlight was our scoring, and we do so again 16 minutes later with Flozek. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Valencia would get one back, but at the Mistaya, we left with a 2-1 advantage going into the second leg. That fixture would almost be a month later, but there was confidence within the side. One sign from last year that we barely mentioned made an impact. Roo, roo, roo. That was like one of the two things he did this season. Nevertheless, we eased through the match and put the cherry on top with Obrador going end to end to dink Alvaro Fernandez. An incredible run to the final, but what happened during La Liga in the meantime? January sucked. Each of the results occurred between a Copa del Rey win, where against Sociedad, Wule scored late to equalize it 2-2, and Mourinho took over Atletico Madrid, very, very nice. His debut was against a club he once managed. It went as terribly as it could get. Shut Please. up, numpties! With losses to Celta de Vigo and Villarreal afterwards, it didn't seem like his time would last too long. However, despite them doing nothing, the score remained nil-nil between us. We did have a promising highlight though. Pedrosa, Melamed, cross in. Nothing. Darder. What were you doing there? Were you just sleeping? Oh gosh. Suarez in be- How did Suarez get it behind? Bro, this guy has no pace! How is he getting in behind our strikers? They would score another, and the Jose Mourinho Dark Arts act was beginning. But that's just filler. We drew Sevilla later in the month, which had us hitting the woodwork four times. Thankfully, February was less rage-inducing. Wins versus Osasuna, Levante, and Granada occurred, while we drew Almeria, nil-nil. We also had a fixture versus Huesca, which in January was postponed due to water blockage. Crazy that's happening in a first division league. The match ended up getting postponed two more times, so when we finally got to it, an opportunity arose to hop back into the top four. Arnold Martinez scored early, but despite them taking the lead into the second half, Adam Hozek would equalize. I desperately wanted to get into the top four, so I won for it in the last 10 minutes with a four triple two, and it had the opposite intention. A disappointing loss. March looked like hell on paper. The Barcelona battle was as good of a time as any to finally win in La Liga against our rivals. But despite Ahmed Hojic scoring first, Fatih got a brace before half time. The game looked like it was going to go the way it usually does, but Hinchapia got sent off with over 30 minutes to go. Is this finally our chance? Okay, we win the ball back. Rooney in behind to Hlozek. Hlozek 1 1 with Ter Stegen. Oh. Or no. It, oh, no. Rooney. Rooney! Oh, wonderful! No. Bill Bell also got a player sent off, but in the first half. They scored three minutes later. While we did equalize with RDT, it's a disappointing result, all things considered. Now, Hozik was still scoring, RDT was just being mid, and then there was a Rezo. To this point, no goals in La Liga. His time with us was more of a comedy than thriller. Okay, wait, why are you on air? Wait, wait. Why are you on international duty? Not even for Uruguay's main team, but instead the under 22s at the Pan American Games. Adding to that, he missed games in January because Uruguay needed an emergency call up to the under 23s for Olympic game qualifying. Despite all the downs and constantly being rotated with RDT, Arezzo was given a chance versus Real Betis. And he definitely delivered. A 5-0 blasting, which saw three in the first half from the Uruguayan. Arezzo would then score against Real Madrid. Unfortunately, it was a loss, but he kept it going versus Celta de Vigo and got involved versus Getafe. Bad news was that Hugo Daro decided to score a hat-trick in that Getafe match, and we only salvaged a point thanks to a late equalizer from the unreliable Yabi Puedo. Bad news kept coming, as Hlozek got a twisted ankle in the beginning of April, and on April 20th, we had the Copa del Rey final versus Real Sociedad. 
Espanyol have not won a top flight trophy, let alone a Copa del Rey since 2006. They defeated Real Zaragoza comfortably by the end, 4-1. So without our best player, what would we do? But they have a free kick, Navarro. Come on. Thankfully, it was early, and after some great play by Wu Lei, an own goal by Lenormand arrived. With over 96,000 fans watching at the Camp Nou, Arezzo had some business to settle. To Wu Lei. Wu Lei do it again. Oh! oh Wu Lei, what a move! And what a finish by Arezzo! But they give it right back. We force them to kick it straight up. Arezzo. Rooney. To Arezzo. Let's go! Espanol have won the Copa del Rey third season. Our star striker injured. It doesn't matter. Ankara Wule. Let's go. Yeah, maybe we partied a little too hard. As just five days later, our hangovers weren't cured. And we fell in defeat to Sporting Gijon, who ended up getting relegated. So, there were five matches left in La Liga. And the club was seven points behind Villarreal for Champions League football. Plus, Jose was starting to catch up to us. I'd love to get into the Champions League, but the Copa del Rey gave us Europa League football, which would suffice. However, we played Villarreal next, and the ever so unreliable Yavi Puedo was once again reliable. Four point gap. Sociedad, who were also battling for these spots, drew Villarreal on match day 35, which led to us getting an emphatic 4 1 win over Alaves. Goals from Arezzo, Wule, and RDT. Two point gap. Valencia was up next. They had an impressive campaign, but they had nothing to play for. With Adam Hosek back and motivated, his strike took the advantage. Then, Marcos Andre scored in the 77th minute with a great strike. Can we do it? Pedrosa to Hlozek. He's got space. Can he score again? Let's go! Real Sociedad won, but Villarreal drew Sevilla, putting us in the top four. On match day 37, Mourinho continued Villarreal's pain, all but ruling them out of the Champions League contention. That was because Wule would score a brace against Abar. Changing him to a left midfielder really was a 200 IQ play by yours truly, as he ended the campaign with 13 goals and 13 assists. Yeah, he was on penalties, but that's more goal contributions than Lionel Messi in the last two seasons. So, on the final day, a win was needed to secure Champions League football. Or a draw, because we faced Real Sociedad on match day 38. It wasn't going to be easy. Well, actually... It's off! It's rigged! It was. Champions League, let's go! Here's the situation. I signed a three-year contract, took a pitiful wage compared to more fraudulent managers, plus bringing a team who was expected to finish mid-table into the Champions League while not getting any transfer budget. All I ask for is a reasonable budget, especially with everyone wanting new contracts. <sighs> Looks like I have to sell players to improve the team. Oh, piss off! With limited funds post several new contracts, we were struggling. The only permanent signing was Arno Comas, who caused immense controversy crossing over from city rivals Barcelona. B. We had several players leaving on a free from wingers to center backs, so the depth with the latter was filled with Kadari being called up to the senior squad. For the wingers, I was hoping for Rooney to step up, while Wu Lei pulling off the numbers from last season would have been beautiful but unrealistic at 33. There was only one solution. Just use loans, baby! Jot Silva was brought in on loan from Napoli, and he looked good enough. On deadline day, we sold Nico Melamed to Almeria, which gave us enough funds to sign Blanco from Real Madrid to replace him. Now, I was trying to see if I could pull off another loan for the winger Cuello from Liverpool. I already accepted the Blanco transfer, so this was to see if I could do both. Why was the Blanco transfer cancelled? What do you mean we can't afford the deal? We could afford it one hour ago. Social credit deducted. Apparently, the Cuello loan offer destroyed that deal, despite me not accepting it. I wanted to get the Blanco deal done because that would leave us with three center midfielders and Moyon. With only a couple hours left until the deadline, I couldn't risk missing out on both players, so Cuello was brought in. Blanco would be signed in January, as the board was ever so kind to give us one million pounds and no extra wage budget for that window. Wow, very kind Yan Shang. Very kind. Especially cool to bring up the transfer revenue percentage after the transfer window ends. <laughs> in spite of all the issues and limited space in the wage cap, our start to La Liga was impeccable. We started the campaign with four wins and no goals conceded, and I can only really thank my new assistant manager, 
RVP. I always listen to that little boy inside of me. This man had a different energy to him, and I was excited to work with him. He kept saying the right things in press conferences, and even brought the belief that we could bring down Coleman's athletic Bilbao. Again, a side we haven't defeated in this save, but that changed with a convincing 3-0 victory. Match day 4 versus Villarreal, a goal from Arezzo to give us a 1-0 win. Would this be his breakout season? The win had me feeling great going into Sevilla, but with the score at 1 apiece and me trying to go for it, I'm Hodris made an error that would eventually lead to a Sevilla winner. Thankfully, three victories followed, leading to match day 9 versus Real Madrid. A surprising top of the table clash, and unlike Barcelona, Ancelotti's side has been defeated by us before, yet they haven't been defeated in La Liga so far. Ancelotti's eyebrow was higher than ever, and Marco Asensio was having an incredible time. Plus, we were missing Wule, but maybe that wouldn't matter. Oh no, I thought something was happening. Maybe there is though, Cuello, Mia, to Cuello! BANG! To Camavinga, not like this. Not like this, Clivert. Not like this, off the post. We are parking this bus immediately. Top of La Liga. Who would have thought? Not me. Espanol were having their first Champions League campaign in their history, and it wasn't going to be a fun introduction with Juventus, Manchester City, and Rangers. The Scots were supposedly going to be the easiest match, but we drew them two all on match day one. Juventus were up next, who defeated Manchester City. It was their home debut in the competition, but there was nothing noteworthy until the second half. Is that Theo Hernandez? Oh wait, we won it. Plozek. Plozek. To Arezzo. Good pass. Oh, that went in! Cuello is my man! An incredible position to be in, but the vibe changed as Dardair got sent off with 10 minutes to go. Fortunately, with a conventional 4-1-4 formation and Moise Keane, not Kane. Being offside, we survived. Match days 3 and 4 would be against Marcelo Bielsa's Manchester City, a Pep Guardiola wet dream. The best coach in the world. And we lost both matches. That meant Juventus were up again, but this time at their place. Danilo would strike first with an absolute beauty, which was then cancelled out by Hlozic's strike, assisted by Cuello. Then, a highlight came off their kickoff. Roo, roo, roo. The boys were fighting to keep their lead. Sally, Ahmed Hojic got injured, and with Shutalo not fit, Komas and Francis had to partner up to shut down Vlaovic. I was worried, but Mia intercepted a long pass, gave it to RDT, who found Hlozek, and of course, he scored again. Juventus would get chances, and Mateus Nunez would find the back of the net with less than 10 minutes on the clock. I tried to park the bus, and eventually worked, as once again, we defeated Juventus. So all we need now is a win versus Rangers, and hope Manchester City draw or are victorious against Juventus at home. Thankfully, we did our job absolutely obliterating Rangers, making them wish they were back in 2012. And at one point, City and Juventus were drawn. Juventus then found the lead, and I started to get worried that my 10 points in the Champions League would not be enough. And my worries were soon confirmed, as City finished ahead of us on head-to-head. -head. Back to La Liga, after officially becoming the best club in Catalonia, after 9 games, we indeed faced our rivals, Barcelona. We tied Valencia in the match prior, but soon, Barcelona brought out the can of whoop Despite trying our best, we couldn't keep up with Real Madrid. They were on a monster run of form, yet we were still ahead of Barcelona up until January. But after a Getafe loss on match day 18, gap was two points. To conclude the halfway point of the season, a visit to Jose Mourinho's Atletico Madrid was next. Except, it was no longer Jose's home. In the, morning. the man taking charge would be Jurgen Klopp. I was worried. Until I saw Marcos Llorente starting at striker. We won 3 1. But if Jurgen Klopp translates his Liverpool success, La Liga will not be a fun place in a few years. Now it's time to win the most prestigious trophy in Spain the Spanish Super Cup. In Saudi Arabia? While the Saudis did not care whatsoever about our match versus Real Sociedad, Adam Hozik did, as he scored the winner just before the half, meaning our opponents in the final were Real Madrid. It's always a tight match against Ancelotti's men, and this was going to be no different. This is going to be a chance for us, Mia, Wule, RDT. Penal every day of the week. I swear, Var, if you say that's not a penalty, I am going to go insane. RDT against his team from the academy. RDT. Boom. Let's go. Oh, Dar Dar it. Oh, Camavinga keeps the ball. He's too strong. Camavinga with the worst shot I've ever seen. Let's go. Another trophy for Espanyol. Real Madrid cannot handle. Espanol, they can win La Liga, they can do whatever they want, they can't beat us, 
in the prestigious Super Cup. No one gives a crap about this crappy La Liga trophy. Copa del Rey, been there, done that. Champions League, piss easy. No one needs it. Super Cup is what matters, and we are the winners. Vamos! Best team in Spain, I don't want to hear anything else. <laughs> After the Super Cup success got to our heads, we had a mid-season slump. The first instance is what I call the 99%. On Twitch, check me out there at the crew by the way, in a match with Levante, 99% of predictors chose us to win. We didn't win. Three straight draws with Bilbao, Sevilla, and Huesca occurred, and our gap to keep our Champions League spot was shrinking by the match day. Meanwhile, it was time for the Europa League knockouts. Espanyol had finished runners-up in this competition twice, and it was not going to be easy with the field of teams. Sporting Club de Portugal was around 32 opponents, and with the first leg at home, it finished nil-nil, and we had to go to their place and win. Thankfully, we had Adam Hozek, and they had Nuno Santos number one getting sent off. The round of 16 opponent was Serie A winners AC Milan. Of course. Like the sporting tie, the first leg at home remained at nil-nil. A visit to the illustrious San Siro followed, where Duvon Zapata scored twice in the first half. Oh, what are these mistakes, man? You know what time it is. We had to go all out, making a double sub at the break, which included bringing on Usama Labiad. A couple of seasons ago, I found this guy while looking at the top scores in the U19 Spanish divisions. He played for Leal Taf, a semi-professional club, and there he was, a 16-year-old from Morocco. I brought him in to score goals for the under-19s, but never thought he would develop into anything special, especially with a fickle personality. However, as the months and years went by, he kept training hard and developed like crazy. Then suddenly, during this season, he had a change of attitude and became driven. His determination went up by 8 and was starting to become ready for the first team. Ankara Wule to Labiad. Oh, what a strike by Usama! Holy, we're back in it! And we have a highlight, Pedrosa. Bozak, Pedrosa whips it in, Wule whips it across. No way! Is that Labiad again? Despite Milan's late onslaught, this was going to extra time. Oh, yo, yo. As if. Ahmed wins it. Mia. Wule. In behind Dulabiad. Can he get a hat trick? Oh, what a block. Tomori piss off. Such an unfortunate result. Largely because of us hanging on to the last Champions League spot like Mufasa and the Lion King. We did get good results while battling in the Europa League, but Valencia once again proved to be a problem for us. Real Madrid tried to continue that for us, and with two wins over them, there's no way Ancelotti would allow us of all teams to get a treble over them. Valverde scored first, but even with them having guys like Vinicius and Clivert, what they didn't have was Wule. Speaking of the man, he scores. Francis, Flozek, Jot, to Wule, Penal, Penal, every day of the week referee. Courtois is no match. Oh, Wule, Mia. Woo, this is the match of Wu Lei. People talk about Messi's matches against Madrid. What about Wu Lei? Two goals and an assist. It'd be a perfect time to defeat Barcelona. <laughs> Following another loss to Real Sociedad, Batiste was crucial. We were just two points up on them for fourth place, and a draw or loss here would make things difficult. Mia, let's go. Mia to Hlozek. In behind Arezzo. Let's go. It's what we needed. It's what we needed. Despite our loss to Granada, we confirmed our place into Europe's elite with two matches to go. Lozak was once again our top scorer, while both Arezzo and Raul Thomas did well. But with one year remaining on their contracts and promising strikers coming through the academy, one will have to go. Now, if only Chen Yangsheng could ever be so kind and give us a budget to compete in the Champions League. Here comes the money! I guess I'll take it. Last season, Jurgen Klopp became a Flauco Madrid manager, and I feel like I'm getting a sense of deja vu. Whoa. Nice. In his first season, he didn't qualify for the Champions League, made the Europa League final, and lost. It was a somewhat aging squad that needed to be freshened up after years of disappointment. Sounds familiar. That's not so cool. That was the situation he was in, and with our Espanol playing him to start off the campaign, I had to be somewhat confident. We finished in the top four for two straight years now, but there were signs of stagnation as despite our success, the owner Chen Yangsheng still gave us a pitiful budget as several contracts were renewed. The signings we made looked like good value at least, but do they really move the needle? Klopp's Atletico Madrid, on the other hand, spent over 200 million. Suchic, a promising wonder kid, Ossiman, Yusuf Demir, Ozan Kabak, Frederick Bjorkin, and our former loanee, Cancellieri. That, to go along with Richie Not the Regista, Pedro Poro, Hermoso, Lamar, and I'm sure there's more. 
Despite all of that, we were winning against them. Our Moroccan Labiad, filling in for an injured Hlozek, opened the scoring, and it seemed like another successful campaign was on the cards. Unfortunately, Cancellieri did score on us, but we were still doing well. Until... Oh my... Wu Lei, no! Wu Lei gets sent off on the first game of the season. What have I just witnessed? Pain. Managing the game into the second half with it being one apiece, Richie then decided that his right foot was a bazooka. An L on opening day. Let's cut the crap. This La Liga season was looking like a disaster. As teams were figuring out the 4-4-2 that we use, my football philosophy was becoming outdated. Only three wins from the first 11 matches, which had us near the relegation zone. It culminated with a loss to Real Madrid, where the stats don't look too bad in our favor. However, the side were making more mistakes than before, shots that wouldn't go in in previous years ended up finding the back of our net. Maybe we had bad luck, or maybe things were getting stale. I do have someone to blame for all of this though. R. D. T. T. Is that the... the choice was made in the summer to sell RDT in his final year of his contract. The apparent transfer valuation was still decent, and with Arezzo receiving a new deal, it was time to go for Raul. He has to go, blood! There were offers initially in the window, but they seemed too low. Some were wanting a wage contribution as well. Finally, Leon sent an offer that didn't include a wage contribution, only 9 mil up front, and 6 in installments, but I could find some way to improve the team with that. Then, I forgot one crucial thing. Hello! I like money! He rejected Leon's offer, and whenever I offered him out to clubs, even bring down the price tag to 5 million, no one was biting, as they didn't feel they could match his wage demands. So the decision on Arezzo or RDT to leave, they both stayed, and both were terrible. RDT would eventually leave in January for basically pennies to sport, which would free up the wage budget. Would Chen Yangsheng give us more money? A little for the wage, but he outright refused to give us more transfer budget despite the club being rich. I leaked my unhappiness to the press, and was immediately summoned into the owner's office. Why did you feel the need to publicly criticize the board's actions? I was disappointed that the request wasn't granted, and how can I not be? We have so much money in the balance! We will put this behind us for now. But don't let anything like this happen again. Nevertheless, with Barcelona on match day 12, I was preparing to use a specific formation. It's basically a 4-3-3, but with two defensive midfielders. I saw Shakhtar Donetsk defeating Barcelona with it last season, so I thought I'd keep it in the reserve as we haven't defeated them in this entire adventure. It was used in a few games this year to mix success. One problem, there was limited midfield depth due to Blanco breaking his leg, which resulted in us needing to reconstruct Wule once again for him to play in the center of midfield. It went according to plan. That's a bold pass by Wu Lei, but it works for now. Shoot hollow. In behind to Wu Lei. Let's go! Wu Lei! 1 0, Espanol! Barcelona were finally defeated. And the same could be said about Valencia, Sevilla, Villarreal, and Salta de Vigo. Just like that, we are back in Champions League contention. But speaking about Europe's elite. PSG, Inter, and Dinamo Kiev. I wonder who PSG have. Holland, Holland. Not this sh again. Draws with Inter and Kiev weren't ideal, especially with two matches against the Parisians next. Orazo, Flozek, Turuni. <gasps> no way. You know what time it is? Roo, roo, roo. Ba, 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 ba. Cut off kickoff. Rooney in behind to Orazo. Can he make it too? What? <laughs> yes. Holy Rooney with the assist as well. It's a slight damper there. Holland. Oh, Neymar. Oh no. Why are you guys not paying attention? Not like this. Oh my gosh. Wait, boss champ. <gasps> Let's go! <laughs> Suck it, PSG! The reverse fixture at our home? Follow. So maybe we can pull one out. Bang, bang. Never mind. The penultimate fixture of the group was 1 versus Dinamo Kiev, which meant on the final match day, we played Inter. Only a win was enough at the San Siro, and we completely crapped the bed. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, as everything that could go wrong, did. Back to the Europa League. Our La Liga form was mixed after the immense disappointment putting us 6 points behind the top 4 halfway through the campaign. We did get another opportunity to win the Super Cup, but in the semi-final facing off with Real Madrid, when Doozy would score. However, we did equalize with all this nonsense happening in the box. At least, that's what I thought. The goal could have been scored seconds earlier, but Wule blocked the shot from going in, and guess what? Wule was offside! I like to think the Super Cup lost its prestige. Now, it was time to face Jurgen Klopp again. His side were balling out so far, and with them scoring an early corner, 
I had a bad feeling in my stomach. What the sh? We bounced back against Real Batiste and Huesca while making the Copa del Rey semifinals too. Maybe winning a trophy could make up for this mess thus far. The question is, who will we play over two legs? We put a much better account for ourselves in this first leg. Chances were being created, yet all of them were being missed. It was getting frustrating as we were the better team and deserved a goal. That led me to go a bit more adventurous. Come on! Pedrosa, what are you doing there? It's frustrating, that is so frustrating. So it was all or nothing in the second leg. The odds weren't in our favor, but we had to believe that a miracle could occur. That would be kind of them to not make it 3-0. Give them a goal, why don't you? Four matches with them and all else. Let's try the Europa League then. The round of 32 opponent was Lille, and our bad luck was showcased. While we were up 1-0 against Lille, our keeper decided to smash his noggin against the post, and Lille, with only one shot on target, drew us 1-1. In the second leg at Lille, we were able to take advantage somewhat late, advancing to the round of 16. There, we faced off with Leeds United, who won the previous conference league. They had a good side, especially with this Brenner kid. It was certainly a tough and even battle where we barely got the breakthrough. Heading to Ellen Road for the second leg, a solid defensive performance led to a quarterfinal place. The draw given was either Monaco or Spurs, and their dramatic penalty shootout saw Esposito and Kulashevsky miss pens, meaning Monaco would be our opponent. They finished second in league on, well behind PSG, but their team was low-key kind of dirty. Rossos. We were on the back of some poor form as after Leeds, we drew Real Madrid, which should have been a win on all accounts, yet Courtois was just out of this world. Then we lost to Abar due to a goal from the man with the longest beard in Spain, the Catalan Derby followed, where Barcelona decided, yeah, we can score from 20 plus yards with ease. A 3-0 loss despite playing alright. So maybe the headspace wasn't ideal going into Monaco, but if it wasn't long shots that took us down, it'd be players not being able to defend, or even jump! The well-renowned aerial threats of Golovin and Diop being able to win headers over our fullbacks with what I thought was good enough jumping reach, and don't even get me started on the fourth goal by Boadu. Sevilla right after, why not let Jose Luis Pinko and score hat-trick and lose 4-0? The Europa League would have been our best shot at the Champions League as 9 points was the gap to 4th. I held a team meeting, which fixed the mood of the group, but 4-0 was an impossible gap. But if one Catalonian club can do it against the French side, why can't we? Oh, hold on, here we go. Finish this. Okay. Come on. Jan's just gonna boot it up. And Hozek's gonna get in behind. No, it's gonna be Wu Lei. Let's go. That's two. Come on. Come on. Victor G. Ankara Victor G. Whip in. Wu Lei makes it three. One more. That's okay. Just win this header. Oh, no. Oh, no, not Dio. Okay, we still need two goals now. Oh, they're just getting by us so easily. Ah, it wasn't meant to be, as despite winning 4-2, Monaco would advance. And I guess your best wasn't good enough. Now, Clubs of Atletico Madrid would get eliminated in the Europa League, and they would lose the Copa del Rey final as well. However, the pain they caused me was impactful. On match day 36, we were ruled out of the Champions League. The season wasn't completely ruined, as on the last day, Real Sociedad were defeated, leapfrogging them into fifth. On Atletico Madrid's side, they would smash Huesca on the final day to confirm their La Liga title. Going into the final year of our contract, the owner gave us our largest budget. An extra 3 million. To the 9 million we already had! We're in a make it or break it season. One year left on my contract, and after missing out on the Champions League for the first time in a couple years, my future was uncertain. Let's not worry about that now, because we started the La Liga campaign brilliantly. Despite Lozic being injured, the opener was a massive 4-1 victory over Valencia. Areza was doing well, but the real star of the show was Usama Labiad. He of course scored against Valencia and followed suit versus Athletic Bilbao, Malaga, Sevilla, and Deportivo La Coruña. Sevilla was the only blemish in a match where we wasted a bunch of chances. It is what it is. Transfers that were made to improve the squad involved the free signings of Jeffrey Congdabia, Miguel Gutierrez as a rotation option at left fullback, Juan Soriano who started in net for us, until he damaged his spine. Pain. Carl Zelenia was brought in from relegated Getafe for just 4 million. Dardar left on a free, while two left backs were let go. Pedrosa for 5.5 million to Tigres, and Sanusi for 9.5 million to Hellas Verona. That means we needed a new left back. So I spent the most money during my spell at Espanol, and that'd be for Omar Richards from Lyon. 
So against Jurgen Klopp's Atletico Madrid, a team that smashed us four times last season, will these signings be enough? The only problem with Kong Dabe is just he's got injured in the two games he started this season for us. Oh, there's Kong Dabe. That was all ball, ref. What bull crappery is this? Lozak finds Rooney. Let's go! Hit it for the real fans. Roo, roo, roo. Be careful of Aussie, man, please. No, not Richie! 71st minute, we have a free kick. It is Alenia stepping up. Let's go! What a strike by Carlos Alenia! Doing the Naruto run. Will it cost me? Oh, no, Lozak! Nico Sanchez! He scores! 3-2! Espanol! Boom. <laughs> what? While Real Madrid were dominating La Liga, Barcelona were having a torrid time. Nevertheless, winning 2-1 against them was brilliant until we forgot how to mark. Oh! Still, after 14 matches, there were great results that had us in an awesome position. Coming up against Real Madrid, what a story it'd be to defeat them and be within two points of the title. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because they're just a better team. Who needs El Bobby? That triggered a domino effect of a couple poor results like drawing nil-nil with Abar and losing to Mallorca, who I guess we can't defeat. Despite Real Madrid running away with everything, we were in fourth halfway through the campaign. Now I requested an increase to the transfer budget with the January window arriving. I've been doing a great job winning manager of the months and things like that. The wage budget increase was instantly denied. But I managed to convince Chen Yangsheng into giving the club additional cash for the existing transfer budget. I was shocked, but excited. I can't wait to see what we get. What the gift. Thank you, Chen Yangsheng. Priority number one, a great anchor. Caceres from Argentina ended up being the option, and he was, in my opinion, a significant upgrade over Arnold Martinez in that role. Unlike last season, we were barely using the 4-3-3 with two DMs. Instead, let's take the older 4-4-2 that we used and create what I call a modern 4-4-2. It's the classic 4-4-2 with a few slight adjustments and bam! We have revolutionized football. It wasn't always perfect, as in the start of the second half of the campaign, a loss in the Copa del Rey to Deportivo La Coruña, drawing athletic Bilbao in the 94th minute, and allowing Piotr Zielinski to fall out on us, resulting in a 2-1 loss to Valencia. The frustrating outcomes of these fixtures led me to do something I never attempted, spend a transfer budget that I don't have. <laughs> I saw this Arsenal player named Alberto Molero, and it seemed like he was available for 24 million. So that was a fucking lie. I felt he was too good of a player not to bring in. And we had money after the sale of Jovic to Mainz at the sum of 13 million. Now Matias Arezzo signed a new contract last season. However, he just wasn't being the guy. Labiat and Hosek were more consistent, but I never considered selling him since his value was never that high. Then on deadline day, Arsenal made an offer. I rejected it and got a knock on my door. He was confused why I didn't accept Arsenal's bid, and I just laughed because the offer was shit. He wasn't laughing. Let's just say I agreed to sell him as he wasn't worth the trouble, and you know the installment treatment we gave Arsenal? Wolfsburg did the exact same thing to us. Now, it was far too late to sign anyone else, but there were guys in the B team who were falling out in the second division of La Liga who could fill in his role. Following that, it's time to finally talk about Europa League dreaming. The draw for our group was intriguing. Initially, Sporting was the first opponent, the club we sold RDT to. I was excited to see him and ask about life, how the family was doing, adult things. Where the hell is RDT? The answer? On his couch, since Sporting never played him. Maybe the fans that called him a fraud were right? That one tidbit was probably more interesting than the entire group, as we eased through it with a rotated squad. Meaning, we finally skipped the round at 32, since first place teams don't have to participate in that stage. So, in the round of 16, we drew Anderlecht, and the job was done in the first leg. Eight teams left, and the draw for the quarterfinals gave us Juventus. Before we get to that, the La Liga form was absolute flames. Malaga? Let's get a Labiad brace. Sevilla? It's Flozic's turn for a brace. But Falco Madrid at the Wanda? Maybe the craziest match of the season. You wouldn't believe it from the first half. However, after exchanging goals, let's tune into the last 10 minutes. Whip in! Come on! How are we letting Richie score a header there? Oh my, we've made all three subs. No, no, we're gonna make you a false nine. But we do have a highlight off the rip, attacking for the last little bit. Corner kick, Malero is gonna whip it in. Let's go! Josep Shutalo, we're, we're going for the win. We're going for the dub, highlight. This could be costly, but it could be the best decision I've made today. Still has, we still have a Malero, Caceres, Alenia, pass across. Let's go! 
Oh, yeah, make it double. Why not? We beat a Falcon Ninja twice, 3-2. Let's go. The following six matches were all undefeated with four wins and two draws, which is good. But the draw with Granada was last minute pain, and Levante made me want to throw my PC out the window. Being real, Real Madrid were just overpowered, but a top 4 place was looking likely. All we needed to overcome was the toughest stretch of the campaign. Spoiler, Sociedad was dealt with comfortably despite a rotated side. So let's see if we can overcome Juventus. A match with either Jovic or Arezzo was awaiting us, and getting a successful 1-0 victory in leg 1 had me feeling great. I could argue that more was deserved, but we moved. Juventus supposedly didn't have a manager, and we learned post-match that the coach in charge of first team activities was the goalkeeping coach. Sadly, he ain't clueless, as he learned his mistakes of playing McKenney on the wing and put him straight into midfield, resulting with Sar scoring early in leg 2. We were creating shots, but many were outside of the box. While threatening, you aren't going to win the tie if you keep spamming attempts from distance. Work the ball into the box was applied, and both sides were trading chances. Thankfully, it was us who scored those, regaining our one goal aggregate lead. Of course, Juventus were dangerous, but I felt good about seeing the game out. The fullback performances were my only concern, so I subbed one of them off. Sar. Still oh no! Richards gets sent off with 15 to go. Not like this. Can anyone play left back? No. Just hope we can hold off. Corner kick. Cleared away for now. Oh no. Thankfully, those bozos from Turin lost the final to Inter, but man, I felt like such a big missed opportunity. Despite my head being hot, we had Barcelona right after, and I made sure to train my defensive corners and free kicks, as Barcelona seemed to always be a threat off those. Okay, free kick Barcelona, we practiced defending set pieces, which didn't work. Alright, oh no, come on, we practiced defending set pieces. Ooh. Real Madrid were on their way to win La Liga, and while that was cool for them, I wanted to win. Penalties were scored by both sides in the span of 10 minutes. But I thought, why not bring out the 4 triple 2 Okay, I'm calm. Labiad's one on one. No one in sight. Labiad. Let's go. I didn't even have a reaction during this section because I knew it was coming. In spite of that, Real Madrid would go on a poor run of form, which had them knocked out of the Champions League and lose back-to-back -back La Liga matches to Bilbao and Sevilla. Meanwhile, we won our two matches, which brought the gap down to six points with three matches left. Real Madrid had Atletico Madrid next, and if they lost, we could go three points within them. They won and confirmed themselves as La Liga winners. It's a false hope that kills you. Did I stay or did I go? Cool. What's your decision? I stayed because despite Chen Yingsheng taking our money to buy one of his many yachts, there weren't really any good options. Plus, we had a fun, exciting squad coming through at Espanol. With Matias Arezzo being sold for big money last season, we brought in Belgian wonder kid keeper David van Handenhoven. Both Juan Soriano and Johan Garcia left for a bit more than 15 million combined. Jorge de Frutos left for 4.5 million. Kadari exited for 4 million. Antonio Blanco set his sights for Lille. Kong Dabia pieced out in January, while many decide to go out on the. No. I had an initial 16 million to spend before the sales, so Brais Mendes from newly promoted Celta de Vigo arrived as another center midfield option. The only other ins were promising players. That includes Luis Varela, Julio Gonzalez, who was Oviedo's top scorer in their promotion campaign. I barely played him and loaned him out. In January, Hussein Karakush came from Turkish club Gustepe, and we pulled the heist of the century, bringing in 15-year-old Ivan on a compensation deal from Malaga. An opening day victory versus Abar was a good omen, until I realized we were playing Atletico Madrid next. Already? It was a great start though, as Oblak no, decided no, to imitate no, Manuel no, Neuer, no, which went no. completely wrong, and Hlozek cut home an empty net. Atletico Madrid would respond after the half, and Aussie man who had an absolute unreal goal scoring campaign equalized with a header in the box. I'll take a draw at their place. You could say that the early bit of the La Liga season had us in a good moment. With Batiste, Getafe, and Deportivo La Coruña defeated, the only blemish was Jovic and Danjuma causing us problems. Labian and Puche cancelled their goals out for a 2-2 draw. Speaking of Puche, let's introduce you to Double P. Or PP for short. PP review! The first half was Mathis Peters, a Cypriot international who came from my academy in the first season and has dominated the third and second divisions of Spanish football. During his dominance, he partnered up with Israel Puche, who, like Labiad, was found years ago dominating the U19s. And like Peters, he dominated the Spanish footballing pyramid and both were ready for the first team. Peters was scoring in the matches mentioned earlier, 
including a hat-trick versus Getafe. Puche was scoring too, but he really showed his ability in the Champions League. <laughs> Attempt number three in this competition, and of course, this is our group. The odds were against us, and versus Shakhtar, a team that would be the easiest, it was quite the opposite. Despite Alenia scoring first, Davineras would shift the balance towards the Ukrainian club in just 19 minutes. The Europa League GTA meme was already popping up in my head, and we were still losing late in the match. Puche was brought in, and was already threatening with his illustrious pace, yet nothing. Until Pedraza became jealous of double P, wanting to be part of triple P, Instead, he got sent off, and we immediately scored from a free kick, thanks to this guy. We'll take it. As Shakhtar were distraught with everything that just occurred, Puche would then score not just one, not just two, but three goals in 12 minutes to go along with Brais Mendes' goal in a 6-2 smashing. Smashing became a common occurrence for Shakhtar, and not in the Markiplier sense. Oh god! But they legitimately got obliterated in the group by Inter, and later, us. Speaking of Inter, they embarrassed us in the final UCL group stage match years ago to eliminate us into the Europa League. So when they stepped onto the pitch, I ordered for no mercy. <laughs> oh what the? So Shudad were dealt with afterwards, giving us Liverpool at Anfield. With Klopp at Atletico Madrid, their manager was Steven Gerrard, and yes, he finally won a Premier League medal. Yeah, of course. As expected, it didn't start well, with 35-year-old Mo Salah and Rodrigo scoring in the first 18 minutes. But not even 15 minutes later, we sent a ball in behind, and Allison smacked up Laviad for a penalty. Alenia converted it, and by the way, we almost lost him to his 20 million release fee to Chelsea, but now, he's a top runner at the club by a significant margin. A little after the halftime interval, Puche won the ball, soon received it back, found Brais Mendes, who first time volleyed it into the back of the net. That's how it ended. But October wasn't really our month. Ah, oh, come on, man. With two matches left in the month of Spooktober, we had La Liga matches versus Sporting Guion and Real Madrid. Despite Puche scoring against the former, we ended up losing with a rotated side. Against Real Madrid, it was a nil-nil draw thanks to Thibaut Courtois. That had us in fourth place. But the table all around was tight. Liverpool at home was next, and the start was beautiful. But we win the ball off them. Francis finds Puche. Puche. Boom! 1-0. Easy. But then I remembered they had Kareem Matiemi back from injury. Now let's say we were in an alternate universe, and he was at a club like, I don't know, Leverkusen? Well, whatever his attributes were there, they're a whole lot worse than what I faced. What I'm trying to say is he scored. Don't you fear though, old man Salah made a mistake to give Richards a free cross to Puche for the go-ahead goal. Salah scored 5 minutes later because Francis was a complete idiot and conceded a pen. After Puche missed this chance, Luis Diaz found space to take the lead for Liverpool. Okay, let's go. Highlight. 72nd minute. Richards. Shutalo. Elenia. Caceres. Find Labiad. Arno now. To Labiad. Let's go! 3-3. What a finish. Come on, no way. No way. Oh my god. Gosh, Richards, man. I know you can't jump. The decisions on the pitch by some defenders, and by me not to close up shop, would cost us. Inter would slay us at the San Siro, and despite defeating Shakhtar 8-0 on the final match day, it didn't matter since we were officially eliminated before we stepped onto the pitch. So once again, it's Europa League dreaming. Focusing back on La Liga, we went on a run of a lifetime. A perfect November with convincing wins, goals from Labiad Puche and the returning Brais Mendes were key. Although in November, it was a dark two days in Madrid for club legends. Real Madrid were down bad in their league positions, and after losing to Celtic, Ancelotti was sacked. He surprisingly lasted over six years, but Real wasn't the only place reminiscing of past success. Across the city, Atletico Madrid were in a similar position. They were on a bad run of form, losing to Leeds twice, and their mega-rich owner had enough and sacked Jurgen Klopp a day after Ancelotti. Marcelo Gallardo came in for Atletico, and he had a good start for his new club, but the same cannot be said about Real Madrid's guy. Zidane, Zidane. Back to us, in December, we weren't necessarily crushing it, but a late banger from Francis versus Mallorca gave us a win there. Osasuna was frustrating, as we played against 10 men for basically the entire match. They parked it and were nearly successful, but Alberto Malero was found off a free kick and won us the game late. We found ourselves in first place, as Barcelona were beginning to struggle. They were next in the Catalan Derby, 
and with a score even at one apiece, Rais Rooney in behind, Lozak. All around the keeper! Let's go, Rooney, with the assist, let's go! We haven't shown anything in this half, and we did it! Let's go! Valencia afterwards was odd, because I saw two things that have not had occurred to me in FM this year. Not only did I see them get a player sent off with two yellows in the first nine minutes, but after taking the lead with Brais, Alenia had a free kick in the 51st minute. Free kick, Alenia. Oh. What the heck? <laughs> oh my goodness, what happened there? Here's Yohan, that confirmed the manager of the month award for yours truly. In January, the Spanish Super Cup returned to Spain, and once again, it would be Real Madrid. The score was tied with Hlozek and Tammy exchanging goals, but as the game was going on, I didn't want to go to extra time, so I took our 4 triple 2 to either win it or lose it. We lost. But that was a blessing in disguise, not because of Zidane getting sacked a couple weeks later since he could barely win a match in La Liga. No, no, no. More so due to the fact that Atletico Madrid won 120 minutes with Barcelona, but in the Super Cup final, they won 120 minutes again where they won the mentioned Super Cup. However, they played us three days later in the league. While Gallardo's side were on fire winning every single game bar one with him, our match was all evens with the dominant Aussie man scoring for them and Labiad for us. A quarter of an hour after halftime, we won a controversial penalty, which Alenia slotted home, handing us another victory in the league. Yeah, we get smashed by them in the Copa del Rey quarterfinals 3-0, but I could care less because our amazing form in La Liga continued. January gave us five victories, including Labiad saving our bacon against Abar in Granada, that confirmed another Manager of the Month award for yours truly. February would have me receive a third straight managerial trophy, as Villarreal were defeated. Getafe had a shock being down 2-0 with 40 to go, but an incredible comeback involving Puche, Flozek, and Labiad gave us a 3-2 win. Deportivo saw our man from Turkey destroy their net, and Bilbao couldn't handle Puche for a about two minutes. The winning run went all the way to 17 matches as Sporting Gijon were defeated 3-0. With 10 fixtures to go, we were 14 points clear of Atletico Madrid, and it would have to take a monumental collapse to not see it out. But first, in the round of 32, Porto would arrive and lose the first leg 3-1. While they made things interesting in the second leg with Mamadou B.I.'s goal, they couldn't find another and were eliminated. In the round of 16, we faced former team. This whole adventure began as I was sacked after 90 days with Leverkusen, so wouldn't it be fitting to finally face them in this safe? I had a point to prove, not just to the fans, or the Twitch chat saying crew out, but to myself, and we did just that with an emphatic 3-0 victory. Leverkusen would make it interesting. In just 18 minutes, they cut the aggregate down to 3-2, but we had one half of double P coming off the bench. Okay, good block, counter-attack, let's go, counter, 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 go, Puche, oh my, Puche, to seal the deal, he seals the deal, Israel Puche, Leverkusen down and out, they scored a third. But it wasn't enough, as the second best team in the Bundesliga were defeated. How fitting. The quarterfinals weren't getting easier. This time, it was Borussia Dortmund. The first half of League One at Signal Iduna Park led to nothing. But that wouldn't stop Alberto Malero from introducing himself with a great strike into the bottom corner. Unfortunately, slow Jonas win would get behind Shutalo and equalize. In spite of this being a decent result, we had one more chance. Can we find a go-ahead goal to take the advantage going into our home tie of this leg? Wule. Oh my gosh, he has actually done it. Wule has scored for Espanyol. Incredible scenes. At 36 years of age, he may not play as much anymore, but he at least gave that. The home fixture at our place was a snooze fest, meaning we advanced to the semi-finals of the Europa League for the very first time. The final obstacle before facing the impossible final of Manchester City. How the hell did they get there? <laughs> It'd be another German opponent, Borussia Mönchengladbach. They finished fifth in the Bundesliga, so you'd expect us to be able to overcome them. However, with chances from both sides, nothing was scratching the surface, although Poruna Riga got sent off late. And with the clock past stoppage time, we had a throw in. Oh, last highlight before the game ends. Flozek across. Peter scores! Let's go! So at Borussia Park, one match was between us and losing to Manchester City in the final. Thank goodness for a late goal though, as the most Spanish sounding name Richard Smith scored in the 27th minute. Soon after, Omar Richards, who was having an incredible campaign, got injured. Still, the tie was close, and only a mistake was going to separate us. With that, please don't let Timo Werner score on. 
Bomb headed bombshell. I think Timo actually scoring from outside the box confused many. And he clearly confused Shutalo, who thought, let's just do for Timo in the box. This stupid son of a bitch. What are you? Oh my gosh. And despite scoring late, we lost. It was a bittersweet ending, and maybe Labiad being injured was a reason for this. But on the positive, there was La Liga. While our winning run ended with several draws, including Sociedad, Real Madrid, Sevilla, and a loss to Celta de Vigo, that still wasn't enough for us to drop from our position. On match day 35, a draw was all that we needed, and the other half of PP, Mathis Peters, scored a brace as we confirmed our league title with Wule lifting the trophy. A first ever La Liga for a club that was founded in 1900 and had seen their Catalonian rivals win 5 Champions Leagues and 28 La Ligas. So it'd be fitting that we played them on the final match day where they had to give us a guard of honor. Poetic. And with the transfer budget given, I do think it's not like there's a universe out there where Espanyol actually got an owner willing to spend money on the club. <laughs> Here's how to anger a set of fans with one move. It gets worse. Hold it! Let me explain myself. In what will be our final season with Espanyol, Puche was starting to become the guy. And ever since we had Hlozek, his goal tally went down year by year. And he did not improve his attributes whatsoever. Plus, Labiad, Peters, and Gonzalez added with Puche made striker seem like a position we could offload. Yet fans were rightfully pissed that an icon of the club left. However, I demanded patience which led to more players leaving. Arnold Comas' release fee was activated by Valencia. He didn't want to renew and went to PSG. Nico Sanchez, who we brought years ago from Colombia, was sold for 26 million up front to Gladbach. Some other new gens left us, but then there was Rooney. Ashenet! Now hear me out. He got injured in preseason, knocking his stamina down to eight, so he could barely play an entire match of football. I don't get it! His contract was down to his final year, and he wanted to leave to one of many clubs and wouldn't renew. I also saw this guy as his replacement. Pace, dribbling, finishing, and he resigned for 120k a week with his club. Eder Militao for 80 million, anyone? What the? As we said goodbye to Rooney, we can hit it one more time. Roo, roo, roo. Ba, 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 ba. Now with Eder Militao in, there is nothing that can stop us. Oh, what the? What do you mean it's complicated? Unfortunately, the levers I had to activate to have our squad below the wage cap were selling two starters from last season. Caceres was sold as Arnold Martinez was good enough to start. The other player was originally Shutalo, but he wouldn't be enough. And since Francis wanted to leave due to interest in him, we accepted Real Madrid's 55 million offer, which he rejected. You what? Instead, he would join Rooney at Atletico Madrid. The other signing we made was a Wonder Kid center back from Bayern, who could play right back as well. Now the main goal of this last season was one, not to have everything implode. However, the other main goal was to advance to the Champions League knockouts for the very first time in this save. We failed in three attempts, and all have been painful. However, winning La Liga last season put us into pot one of the Champions League, placing us in a group with Olympiacos, Leipzig, and Monaco. Our reunion with Lozek, had him not involved since he didn't play. Unlike the La Liga matches, we were playing well, but Damsgaard would open the scoring. Before the half, Puche would equalize. It seemed like a winner would be found, but that wasn't the case, as Monaco left with a draw. Leipzig away followed, and stats-wise, they were the better team. Chances came, including Asugo hitting the crossbar, but Leipzig would score. In their own net, after Labiad's shot got parried into Indica. How Leipzig didn't equalize is beyond me. Nevertheless, we left the Red Bull Arena with a 1-0 victory. Back-to-back -back wins versus Olympiacos followed, giving us an opportunity to clinch a Champions League knockout spot. Leipzig at home, and our Turkish man Hussein, who took over Rooney's role, found Alenia in behind, and he first time striked it into the net. A Wule penalty in the second half would seal the deal, and not just confirm us in the knockout stages, but as group winners. A loss to Monaco in the final group game thankfully didn't matter. With that result in December, it'd only be our second loss in all competitions. So what happened in La Liga from this Bilbao draw to the start of the new year? 11 wins and 1 draw. A lot of the mid to lower table teams were involved, but a 3-0 away win versus Villarreal was the key highlight. Speaking of them, they were our Spanish Super Cup semi-final opponents, and ever since we won this competition, we've lost to Real Madrid every single time. That would change today. Mostly because they're bad and not involved in the competition, but even with a rotated side, 
We defeated Villarreal despite missing a pen. Lampie had scored and was leaving for AFCON soon, so we needed to use him to his max before he left. In the final, we face off with Atletico Madrid. I would try to build this up more, but they just gifted us a goal and we lifted the trophy. By Wu Lei, of course. Also, we played them again three days later, this time in the league, and the exact same scenario happened. Another mistake, another victory for Espanol. Our undefeated run would continue making us look like the Sandman from Punch Out. Unfortunately, Real Madrid has been a thorn in my side for far too long. They drew us earlier in the season with the dumbest decision of the save, which means we've not defeated them in nine attempts. Although, things were going well for us. We were 2-0 up. But then, we lost a header from a goal kick and they ended up scoring. It happened again and we drew 2-2, which was the only fault in January. Nevertheless, in the Copa del Rey, our quarterfinal draw saw us face them again. 10 matches without a win versus them. The odds were against us. Who the hell is their keeper? Well, that was easy. In the semifinals, it'd be Barcelona over two legs. Although, a match versus third place Real Sociedad occurred prior. We had our side rotated due to modern day football having so many damn matches. I was expecting to have a hard time against the only side who has defeated us in La Liga thus far. I was wrong. biggest La Liga win in the 21st century. What followed was a 2-0 victory versus Barcelona in the Copa del Rey first leg, where we saw Labiad and the Turkish wonder kid Hussein scoring. Hussein what? Everyone was missing Rooney, but this guy was doing more, and we found a replacement song. Who? 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 Ba, 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 ba. Repeat fixtures were common as we played Barcelona again three days later in the league. Unlike the first match, we didn't step up, and despite them getting a red card before halftime, the first goal they scored couldn't be matched. The great news was that in the same exact fixture later on in the month, we confirmed our place in the Copa del Rey final with a 1-1 draw. Add that to a couple Wule goals in La Liga, and we could win every single trophy this season. Although, the Champions League was next. <laughs> The round of 16 draw gave us Inter, and the first leg was at the San Siro, which is where we witnessed two Champions League eliminations. This time, a goal came from us. With the people asking Hussein what, Hussein responds with a cross to Puche to give us a 1-0 lead. We were edging them out, but after a Richards mistake, Musa Diaby pulled off this incredible strike to equalize. As I was flabbergasted by that, Moise Kane. Oh my god, what are you doing, Victor G? Moise Kane stepping up. And it scores. Not a great way to end the game, but in leg two at home, Lorenzo Luca was getting open. Finds Richards on the wing. Richards whips it in. Who what you saying? Who's saying? Who's saying what? Who's saying this? Who? 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 Ba 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 ba. Ten minutes later, Hussein then decided to make our lives a lot more difficult. Charon doors. Oh don't. <laughs> more chances were coming for Inter. However, they weren't on their A game. Then suddenly, out of nothing, Shutalo going up the field, risky, but Brais Mendez is all alone. Brais Mendez, let's go! Brais, what a strike! Moise Kane, oh, sorry, Keane, would lose his head. We'd score another and advance to the quarterfinals. Our opponents were Arsenal, a consistent Champions League team managed by Pioli. They had a strong side, and what happened in the first leg versus Inter occurred here. We scored first, but conceded two second half goals for a 2-1 loss going into the home tie. A hint of deja vu was in the air, but could we overcome Arsenal? Uh, oh, we win it though, Alenia, in behind to Peters, Peters from, oh, wait, rebound. Let's go, Mathis Peters. Alenia on the tack, Richards, Alenia whips it in. Let's go, 3-2 on aggregate. Still a lot of football to be played, Arsenal are gonna be dangerous. Martinelli's gonna cut back. What's with our wingers getting red cards in Champions League matches? Nevertheless, Arsenal were knocking, but our back line wasn't opening the door, as yes, we advanced to the Champions League semi-final versus Chelsea. But before that, with the amount of matches going on, the side were beginning to drop points. With the rotated side, we drew Sporting Gijon and Vallecano, while getting a win versus Sevilla. After the Arsenal tie, the genius schedule makers decide to have our cup final three days post-Arsenal versus Arrested of Falco Madrid. For once, we were the ones with the fitness problems. Puche and Hussein were injured, Arnold Martinez wasn't fit, and Bryce Mendes, who had been key, was out for the rest of the campaign. But after no goals in the first half against two of our former players, Labiad, Patience, Gonzalez to Peters, finish it. Let's go! The Cypriot! 
Mathis Peters makes a 1-0. Oh no, corner kick. Timber on the ball now. Oh gosh, Yovain finds it. Push everyone up. Corner kick. Oh no, it's for them. We still had two trophies on the table. So let's check on the Chelsea tie. It was probably the best team I've seen them have in Football Manager, speared ahead by their Ivorian new gen. We were easily the underdogs, but there was nothing to note in the first half. Camavinga would get that first big chance of the half, and the second. I made a tactical change prior that didn't go through with the next highlight. We'll see though, maybe I won't complain. Malero. Let's go! Late in the match, I try to make some changes, but once again, they don't go through with an upcoming highlight. Labiad takes out strengths Nianzu, Molero, finds Puche. <laughs> Holy, did not expect Puche to come up and smack that into the back of the net. Truben unable to match it. 2-0 Espanyol going into the second leg. Could the first European final we play in be the most prestigious of all? <laughs> oh no, Militao takes out Camavinga. Oh no, Puche, Labiad, he finds Puche. Too bad with the kick save. Let's encourage the team for that. Oh, why did they encourage? Oh, because we're technically winning. <laughs> Bro, Militao and Ahmed Hojas having their worst matches of their careers. Gosh, 95th minute highlight finds Alain or no, actually, Ahmed Hojas in behind Ipuche. Oh, no way! Yes! Let's go! <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh no! Last second from Chelsea! <sighs> After a crazy match and nothing happening in extra time, it was time for penalties. Mason Mount is stepping up. Top right corner, top bins from Frank's son, Mia. Oh my gosh, Truben guessed early, but he doesn't get it. Kuasi, the man from Ivory Coast. Will he finish this? Let's go! Stopped by Van Handenhoven. Militao now. Made a mistake earlier in the game. Just tucks it home in the middle. Ansu Fati, the former Barca man. One of many stars on this Chelsea team. He hits the bar! Puche to give us a two lead. Oh my gosh, top bins. Camavinga tucks it home calmly. We need a goal here. And we go through to the final of the Champions League. Julio Gonzalez got a red card earlier in the Champions League. Can he get us to the final? Let's go! We're off to the final of the Champions League. Our final game with Espanyol will be against Manchester City in the final. But we had a La Liga title to defend. After the Copa del Rey pain, we defeated Abar, lost to Villarreal, then got three victories versus Levante, Alaves, and Salta de Vigo. A win would clinch the La Liga title on match day 37, but a bad few minutes against Atletico Madrid would give us an L and a one point lead over them on the final day. Thankfully, we squeaked through with a 2-1 win at Almeria, despite them nearly equalizing on several occasions. Wule got to lift another title, and even got into the team this season in La Liga. I thought it'd be perfect to start him in the final versus Manchester City, but he got injured in the lead. -up. Instead, it would be Mia taking his place for his final match with Espanyol. The starting 11 was looking like this, controversially starting Victor G due to his love for big games, and dropping Elena as he decided to complain before the final. City's lineup made this match the typical David vs Goliath, and their only European trophy was last season's Europa League. So what happened? At the Santiago Bernabeu, good ball, Molero, poor shot, Mbappe on the ball, Foden, Bernardo, off the post. Foden, causing some dangers. Rosas, he's gonna cross it in to Lotaro. Militao, oh my gosh, 80 million for you to miss a header in the Champions League final. Like, how did you miss that? All right, wow, Victor G, relishes big games, huh, FM? Huh, I would've been sad if that happened, but Labiad, Puche, in come on, Puche. Oh, come on. Nothing was happening in the second half, so we had to go with the four triple two. And late in the match, De Jong, uh, Bernardo, oh, blocked. Win that, win that, oh, no. No, not like this. Oh. Ah. And they make it three.
because Richards can't jump. We did our best. It wasn't meant to be. We tried to go for it. City, I don't think they were the better team. They did it out of XGS because we went for it late. But I don't think they were the better team. And unfortunately, a massive error by Militao screwed us over. Really, Militao, incredible. Miss a header in the Champions League final. 80 million, 80 million, 80 million for that guy. I want to throw up. One thing to do though,